Okay, let's let's try and stream our application. So we're going to need to go to our AppV management console first off. And this this time it's a website. So as long as you're you've got the the rights to access the website, you're in the correct group. You've got Silverlight on your machine. You should be able to access uh, the website. So let's go to add a package and we need to browse to either UNC path uh, the UNC path option uses SMB for uh, streaming or we could go to a uh, web address and web address will use HTTP for streaming okay so like I said I'm going to the UNC path and I want to click on the .appv file. Now you can see that there's numerous files in there and the .appv file is like the project file. Uh, the deployment config is uh, configurations that are like machine level. Um, the user config, config is uh, user settings or user configurations and the report is just uh, the report of uh, any it, potential issues from sequencing. Uh, the MSI is if you want to deploy in a standalone setup. So let's go for the app, app, app v file. Okay, I want to click add. Okay, very quickly added. Uh, you can see by default it's set to unpublished. Uh, now down here when I click on the application I can see options, well first puts the application name in here AD access now now you want to have a group that you want to uh, <clears throat> you want to grant access to this application so just as an example I, I have a group set up so I'm going to put in my domain and my group going to hit check it finds the group for me and then I'm going to hit grant access cool so I'm going to hit close and it brings me back to the other screen uh, connection groups is kind of like uh, how dynamic suiting was so if you sequence two virtual applications and you want to break down that isolation between just those two applications to allow them to see one another say if an application has a dependency on another application you can create what's now called a connection group uh, it also appears here ours is a standalone application so we won't require that uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on my app I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit publish okay so let's go back to our client machine now and test the application so I'm at my client machine and I'm going to browse to the uh, AppV client and I'm going to try and instruct it to look back to the server to see if there's any applications uh, awaiting for me so you can see the interface of the client has changed quite significantly uh, overview update that's what's going to check back to the server now obviously uh, users don't have to do this uh, you could configure it to check during certain intervals uh, for new applications and bring them down uh, download all virtual applications so that's going to kick off all the applications that are available for the user to cache onto the machine uh, quite useful for when you want users to be able to work offline uh, all their applications are cached so they don't have to look back to the server to stream down uh, work offline uh, this brings it into like a disconnected state uh, virtual apps is where our applications should appear once they stream down and start to uh, cache and the connection groups are if you have again those applications linked 
Okay, so let's uh, let's hit update here. Okay, you can see it's spinning around like it's doing something. And you can actually on the bottom here, you can go to show PowerShell commands. And you can actually see what commands it's uh, initiating. Because again, it's all PowerShell driven. So if I go to virtual apps now, I can see my virtual applications there. So there we have it. It's on the start menu. If I click to launch it, So if I hit F5 here to refresh, or I should see uh, it's in use and it's moving. And we could see here's our application. And that's it.